Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Torge Peterson, Software PAE at Danfoss Power Solutions. And in this video, I will show you the new software release of Guide, Service Tool and Update Center, also called What's New 2021.1. Starting with the new and extended features of Guide, followed by the new Update Center and Service Tool with advanced page improvements and extended features. Starting with the Guide features of this new release, um, the version name has been changed. Before this version, it was a consecutive numbering like 10, 11, and 12 for the main version, followed by minor and uh, revision or build numbers. The main version numbering has been changed to the year dates, followed by the minor and build number. This new guide version is called 2021.1.6.10. In the following, I will show you and talk a little bit about each new and extended feature. In addition, a lot of fixes took place, which are listed in the release notes. Please take a look to the guide user manual for more detailed information about the features and functionality. Feature persistent address of non-volatile parameters. Until now, persistent address of non-volatile parameters have changed their index dynamically when you add or remove parameters. In guide 21.1, you are able to manually reposition NV parameters in the NV memory and set fixed position which persists even if parameters has been added or removed. There is a new column inside the parameter overview called NV index. Click on the unlock icon to change or set the NV address of parameters. Each index in NV memory is always 16 bits wide for bool, U8, U16, S8 or S16. Data types U32 and um, S32 needs two indexes. This is also handled automatically. For example, uh, U32 and set the index to 12, it will be set automatically to 12 and 13. If the data type of parameter has changed, the address will still change by themselves if it does not fit in its old location anymore. The next feature, Cloud Component Support, has been started to be added in Guide 11.1, but not supported until this version 21.1. Cloud components are new specific components for guide programmable CS products like the CS500, so specific HWD support is required. Simply said, cloud components are normal non-volatile component with an additional cloud-enabled trigger signal. If the cloud-enabled signal is false, this component acts as a normal non-volatile component. If it is true, it is synced with the cloud automatically in the background handled via the kernel itself. In the following, I will show some extended features, so existing features which has been extended in 21.1, like the performance guide editing. Some changes happened in 21.1, which will be continued working on the performance improvements in the following releases. One change has been done in the uh, 2D graphics, so inside the guide um, drawing area and moving graphic components. This refers mainly to, to large projects with, yeah, let's say, thousands of pages where any little movement or change caused long delays in previous uh, releases. This has been significantly reduced and makes Guide more user-friendly. Another change is auto pop-ups switching um, the panels mainly inside the selector with the tabs, um, component, function, hardware, and my code, and also inside the PLCC editor opening and switching between POUs. Another extended feature, add new outputs to multi-touch components. This feature refers to HWD, which supports gauges like displays. In previous version, the delta X and Y coordinates for rotation used for the generic viewport of a PDF document, for example, was not considered. Therefore, two new outputs has been added to the screen objects and guide 21.1. They will be set to the BIOS variables delta X and Y and rotated with the screen object as reference. Local delta X will indicate the movement to the right and local delta Y will indicate the movement down on the screen object, regardless how it is rotated and how the display is mounted. Merge component search items and optimize the search and parameter overview. The searchable items tree in the guide search dialog has been restructured and grouped. And also some minor changes has been done for faster search and faster opening of parameter overview. The two next and also last extended features I will show are separate tab for SCS license errors and unit test tool Excel integration improvement. For the first one, the separate tab for SCS license errors. Um, previously, the license error showed up in the compile error tab. 
Sometimes you were only able to read one of them and to, to avoid this conflict, an additional tab has been added called license messages. This eliminates some situations where license errors and compile errors both needed to show content in the error tab at the same time. For the feature unit test tool Excel integration improvements, it is now possible to add a new test definition with an Excel file extension from the beginning. Before this version, only XML format was used. Also, a new concept called test suites has been added that is basically a way to put the test pages, so the pages containing tests, in a separate document called test suites to run the tests in suites once in a time. In the following, I will show two features for evaluation, which has been added to guide as well, but requires HWD support, which are not available yet. One is the UDS support and guide, which is a feature that is intended to support the UDS protocol di diagnostic IDs for signals in a guide application. UDS diagnostics uh, IDs are used to identify certain signals you want to use in any kind of service tool. The parameter overview and guide provides a new column called diagnostic ID, which I can set UDS standardized ID numbers for. As I said, specific HWD is required, which supports UDS protocol. The other extended feature for evaluation is FMU export and guide part two. The FMU functional mockup unit that can be used in simulation tool to simulate the software behavior has already been introduced in the previous guide version 12.2. In 21.1, the FMU dialog to set up the FMU export has been updated. So two new signals has been added to the CAN database and the command line and structured signal names are also now supported. Also a simulated app layer for evaluation supported by specific HWD to simulate physical hardware pins. Please check out the guide manual how to use the FMU functionalities. After showing guide 21.1 changes, I will switch over to the update center where some significantly uh, changes happened as well. In previous version of the update center, there was a need to have a license to use that tool. This has been changed so that instead of a license, a Danfoss user account is needed. The user needs to log in with their Danfoss account to be able to use the update center if they already have an account because they use mobile service tool or connect portal, they are already signed up. Otherwise, a one-time registration via the Plus One Cloud website is necessary. <clears throat> the Update Center itself retrieves user licenses that are connected to the locked in uh, user account. Via this user specific scan, all needed data um, are read out from the locked account, which helps requesting a trial license, for example, or rehost much more faster without adding all needed registration parameter and sending emails. For the use of the Update Center, Internet Access is mandatory. In addition, the Update Center is now a separate installation, so no need to use Guide or Service Tool. After showing Guide and Update Tool changes, we will have a closer look to the Service Tool released 2021.1.5. As you can see on this page, a couple of advanced page improvements took place, which will hopefully support you better and faster in these areas. So let's start with the first improvement, multiple tabs and panel component. Since version 21.1, you can have multiple tabs in a panel component, which gives the user the ability to browse between tabs on a page without browse between multiple pages. You can add edit, rename, reorder, and remove tabs, and the tabs also show up in the page manager window. Another improvement, generate page. When creating a new advanced page, since this version, the user can create an empty page or generate a page. Via generate an advanced log or parameter page, the user can easily and fast select the needed signals from the respective ECU, choose the component type, and the advanced page will be generated automatically. This generated advanced page can of course be changed later like any other service page. Inside the generate page um, process, the user can set a filter about the selectable ECUs and their respective signals regarding read and write. Inside the list, the user is able to choose and select each signal he wants to use, display or log inside this advanced page. Depending on the signal type, the default component type is set automatically but can be changed from the user. 
Next one, play log file in a modal mode. When opening a log file, it is now opened in a modular dialog where the log file controls are available in the toolbar and the log page is shown. This new separated log viewer is a much more user-friendly step to play log files and use the service tool and the log viewer in parallel and switch between both windows if needed. Advanced page improvement, multiple lines and graph component. In Service Tool 21.1, reference lines has been added to the signal selection dialog for the graph tool, which allows for multiple reference lines. One use case would be to set a high, medium and low reference line. Like before, there's one line you can uh, drag and drop. In design under properties of the graph component setup, it's one fixed line as before. But on the top right, there is add reference serial to add a new reference serial in a separate tab. The normal line settings select color and name and visibility settings to control with signals, buttons or conditions are moved to each series tab. Next improvement, customizable tooltips for advanced page components. The tooltips, also called hint for all of uh, your components like standard log and bar graph, have been made customizable to avoid misleading information. Under design, service application properties, which are part of the P1D, and there's the selection advanced pages tooltip setting. For each component type, you can define your own tooltip. You can also add keywords, which are listed and available for selected component type like ECU and signals. When opening old P1Ds, these settings are set to the old default settings, static text like mean, max, and default. For new P1D, the default settings, no items is selected for all component types. The P1D tooltip settings can be exported and imported. The following improvement took place for panel component, which can be configured as selectable. The property enable selection of panel is added to the panel component properties. Via this property, you can assign a color as well when selected to this panel. If you click the panel in run mode, it toggles between selected and not selected and the respective selected color or normal color. The use case for this was to have the ability to select multiple panels and compare values in panels or show different information based what panels are selected. In addition, these selectable panels are available as trigger components in the visibility settings for all components on the page. You are also able to group these panels and select if one or multiple panels are selected at the same time. This property has also been added via new script functions that could be used to select panels through scripts. Lock P1D file to license and set expiration date. This new feature allows a service technician to service a machine for a limited time period. If a system is protected with a tool key and the tool key is embedded in the P1D, it was still possible for anyone with access to the service application to service the machine. This security case has been expanded that P1D files can be restricted so they can only be used with a certain license ID. While the log file dialog, the user can specify two restrictions which are deactivated by default, license ID controlled and time limited. Via restriction license controlled, you can specify the license ID. This means that P1D files restricted to a license ID can only be opened if a valid license with the same license ID is installed. Via restriction time limited, you can specify an expiration date. This means that P1D files restricted to an expiration date can only be opened if it has not passed its expiration date. After one of these two restrictions has been selected, a warning is shown that a minimum service tool version is needed when using restrictions. If this minimum version is not set, user or users would be able to open restricted P1D in previous version of service tool that does not perform license or the expiration checks. The last advanced page improvements is GIF animations, which can now be added to service tool pages. One use case example is to show the LEDs on a wealth showing the state of the wealth and display same status as physical product. GIF animations are added via the image component and will be animated when shown in run mode. After showing the advanced page improvements, I will move to the extended features like plus one interlink and remote gateway support. By default, routing to all CAN interfaces is enabled. 
This means that any Plus One device connected to the CAN interface of the remote gateway will be accessible in Plus One Service Tool. This functionality can be configured in the CAN interface routing before connecting to the device where the user can enable single or all CAN ports of the Plus One Interlink gateway, which should be participate in routing of CAN messages. CAN tunneling is another gateway setting which can now be enabled or disabled from the gateway selection dialog to enable reception of CAN messages from the Plus One Interlink gateway. CAN tunneling needs to be enabled for CAN messages to be displayed in CAN Monitor and to use CAN Explorer protocol. Another extension took place via CAN FD gateway support. The Plus One service tool is now compatible with CAN gateways supporting CAN FD. Currently supported gateway is the Quasar Leaf Pro HS uh, version 2, which requires the actual Quasar drivers. All built in protocols plugins still only send CAN frames. The gateway selection dialog now includes enable CANFD for CANFD capable gateways and the baud rate settings as well. The Plus One service tool CAN monitor can show CANFD messages and the Quasar CAN King can be used to read and write CANFD messages. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One community help is available on the Plus One user forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One Helpdesk. Thank you for your attention.